Okay, let's just grab this guy, save this image. And let's, uh, we'll just save him. And then there was one more I wanted to look at. Here we go. All right, so I've saved these guys, these images, and let me make sure that my questions and answers are here and viewable. One second. Okay, to get them into ZBrush, and this is for the newbies, the guys who are just starting out learning this stuff, uh, you just have to know which quick palette they're using here. So if you click this, it pops up with the big guy here. And the key is it's using a texture. So what that means, da, 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 you need to load it in a texture. And then from there, you can pull it in to the map. So let's go into texture. I'm going to say import. This is opened off the uh, screen here, off the side. Okay, I managed to import both of them. And so now I will go into my front back, map one, and I'm gonna say, that's my front. I'm gonna close that, go into my left, right, and I'm gonna say that is this guy. Now, they're not right, but that's cool, because this is, this is why there's so much flexibility here. So I'm just going to flip this guy and then the next thing I need to do is start to line them up. So where's the nose? Let me see if I can display that a little cleaner. All right. So I'm just hovering and I'm finding where is the nose on the side image? Is that lining up at all with where the nose is on that front image? And the answer is no. So what I'm going to do now is start to first adjust scale, maybe then position. Let's try scale because I already know right off the top, there's pretty much equal amount of space at the top here. But the bottom is not accurate. Totally different set of scale. So I need to go into my front view and I need to scale that guy down a little. And then I'm going to start to vertically offset him so that it goes towards the top. I can not only use this vertical offset, but use the grid lines. Now, you may not see this in a recording very well, but I'm drawing a red line along the grid. And then I'm going to go here and say it's 1, 2, 2.5 grid lines up and 1 grid line down. So I don't technically need to keep using move to find the position over here. I just need to remember the grid lines. They're there to help. So I'm going to get it so that it's one head here, one unit, which it is already. And then I'm going to test. One, two, and a half. No. So scale's got to go down. Offset's got to go up. One, two and a half, not quite. And then up. All right, so I'm not going to bore you getting that perfect. But now if I come and try to find the nose, I'm in better shape. Nose and then the nose. Not perfect, but better shape. How about the eye? 
I'm using this dot and I'm saying, okay, line up with that white line that's there and then pull out and say, okay, well, it's not horrible. So technically, I should be able to use these guys together, even though they're not perfect. This image is quite nicely centered. I didn't have to use horizontal offset. Let's get that in. Underneath the hair too. And then I can go about changing this fill mode. and start to just establish some of this form. Now most of the guys I know that do uh, these really awesome things, I don't know if you guys, uh, these awesome portraits, let's not be vague, right? Uh, I don't know if you know Eric Sosa. How many people here know Eric Sosa and his work? Mads is communicating something to me, I think. Anybody here? Eric Sosa, give me a shout out. If you don't know Eric Sosa, Google that name and it's Eric with a K and Sosa. S-O-S-A. Eric Sosa does amazing, amazing uh, portrait sculpts. Okay, he's, he's in a class of people that are Eric Sosa, Adam Bean. Okay, Adam Bean, he has his own clay, CX-5. Just these guys do amazing, amazing um, portraits. Do they do these portraits by lining them up like this, looking and trying to line up every single piece of information? What do you, let, me give, let me shout that out to you guys. Do you think they use image planes like this to create realistic portraits of celebrities? Yeah, definitely not. Definitely not. And why wouldn't they line up and use this transparent method to, you know, to get actual identity? What would be the problem with using being really faithful to your image reference? Too stiff? No life? Photoshop, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure Megan Fox is crazy sexy in real life, but I'm sh you know I'm sure there's a little tiny tweaking and simplification. Uh, take a look. Do a do a Google for celebrities before and after Photoshop, you're going to see that they completely obliterate underneath the eye so that you just do not see the actual lower eyelid, which is kind of clings to the eyeball. You don't see that. And instead, you see this real nice soft gradation into the cheek. Uh, if you lock yourself into one photo and that photo's perspective, you, get the, you might get the perspective wrong. So what, what do these guys do? Well, they basically have a desk or a board, and they just have a ton of photos stuck on the board, and they'll be in a three-quarters view. They'll be straight on, slightly looking down. They'll be looking right at you. They'll be looking up at something. And they just have these tons of these boards. They'll try to get a side view. Not tons. They'll have one board, and they just have a lot of images hanging out in there. And they just have a board of, the, of these. And that's what you should be thinking of these grids as. So they should really be interchangeable in your mind.
you should be able to get them, save them, uh, and just kind of work with them here and there. The other tool that you can do, and I'm not sure this will work, but let's try it. Let's turn our grid off, which is as simple as turning your floor off. Okay, That's pretty important. I don't want to gloss over that, because if you're not familiar with this and you end up with a grid on, you want to know how to turn that off. <laughs> so just turn that floor button off. 